Class is now in session. I am Professor Hockey, and today we're discussing game 47 of the regular season between the San Jose Sharks and the Columbus Blue Jackets, in which the Sharks have lost 5-3. to three. This was the first matchup between the Sharks and Columbus this season, and coming into this game, the Blue Jackets were the worst team in the entire league, and that was pretty much on full display in this first period. The Sharks were absolutely demolishing Columbus in that first period, and they were relatively lucky to escape that one down just a single goal from Timo Meyer, his 27th of the season. And I I was watching this first period, and I'm thinking, wow, the, even though the Sharks are only like a few standing spots above Columbus, the, the absolute difference between these two teams is mind-boggling. The Sharks are so much better than Columbus. The Blue Jackets are so, so awful, because really, the Blue Jackets, it wasn't so much that the Sharks were just destroying the Blue Jackets, but the Blue Jackets were almost destroying themselves in that first period. Just awful, awful turnovers, terrible line changes, is generally just really, really poorly played. And so I'm thinking this is going to be an easy cruise victory for the San Jose Sharks. And yet this was the tale of two games here tonight because everything past the first period was pretty much the exact opposite of that. In the end, through the second and third period, it was the Sharks getting outplayed. They would start off the second with a goal to make it 2-0, Nick Bonino, and uh, that would be another goal for him on his mini hot streak, I guess you could say, over these last few games. But then the Blue Jackets began to really pull it back. I mean, even prior to the Benino goal in the second period, the Blue Jackets seemed to be better. And they would get goals from Goodrow and then another to make it 2 Two at the end of the second period, and in the third period, it was much of the thing of the same thing. While the Sharks would get a goal from Nico Sturm to once again take a lead in this one, this time up by three to two, the Blue Jackets would not only tie this one up with a Patrick Line goal, but then take the lead by a former San Jose Sharks goal. Gustav Nyquist and at this point it was 4-3 Blue Jackets and you're maybe expecting some sort of fight from the San Jose Sharks the first time that they would be trailing in this game especially after just a couple of days ago when they came back from down three against one of the best teams in the league the Dallas Stars but there was absolutely zero fight the last couple of minutes in which the Sharks had the goaltender pulled was basically just watching the Blue Jackets send the puck down the ice from their own zone trying to score on the empty net from 200 feet away and eventually they would manage to do that with the Sean Corrali goal and the Sharks after a dominant first period just had seemingly zero respect for this Blue Jackets team who really roared back and really showed us why the Sharks are similar to the Blue Jackets right near the bottom of the NHL standings. Now in the grand scheme of things losing to the last place team when you're the San Jose Sharks is actually a pretty good thing as this was yet another one of those four point games when it comes to the race for the bottom of the league for that Connor Bedard sweepstakes. Will the Sharks really be able to catch Columbus when it comes to these standings? Probably not. I feel as though they're just a few too many points ahead here now that we're over halfway through the season, but still it was definitely a pivotal loss for the Sharks to get if you're looking at it from a tanking perspective. Now on to the players to talk about just as the game itself was a tale of two games between the first and then the last two periods. The Sharks players also played very very different as you would expect in the first compared to the last two periods. So this first line for the Sharks were very very good in that opening in that opening period. Meyer was just taking shot after shot. Great chances for himself. Managed to score a goal. Acemont came oh so close to scoring a goal a couple of times there early on in this game. You really thought he would be able to get it at some point but then as this game went on this line became less and less effective and eventually just were barely even noticeable when they actually came over the boards and onto the ice for their particular shift so that kind of starts from the top when it comes to why there was such a collapse from the San Jose Sharks throughout this game it starts with this top line that just didn't really keep it rolling and it continues with this second line which was even more disastrous for the Sharks. Yes, in the first period, they did have a couple of chances. I thought actually Couture played a very solid first period, but then once this game continued, these this not only were the, was this line not generating anything offensively, but there were also these terrible giveaways defensively. The, it was uh, Barabanov who gave the puck away that led to this Gustav Nyquist goal that was the Blue Jackets game winner by the end of this one. So just generally a really bad game from the second line at the you know, past the 20 minute mark of this game. And the top six just kind of didn't do much for the Sharks. The line that 
did do much for the Sharks was actually the third line, really the only line this game which I felt was actually still good after the first period. And you can tell that just by looking at the score sheet. The only goals scored by the San Jose Sharks past the first period were by players on this third line, both Nick Benino and Nico Sturm. So it is a third straight game for Neo- Noah Gregor as he stays in the lineup. Kevin LeBanc remains a healthy scratch here, which I'll get to a bit later when I discuss the fourth line. But currently, Noah Gregor was continuing to be a very solid force on this third line, especially in that first period. He really had like three or four really solid chances for himself. He was the pass that assisted on the Timo Meyer goal. But also, even past that first period, this third line was still rolling. I talk about Noah Gregor, but I felt like as though the best player for the San Jose Sharks on this third line, and potentially a forward in general over the full 60 minutes, was likely Nico Sturm. The one goal that he did score wasn't necessarily his goal, because it would seem to be an own goal from the Blue Jacket side. He just kind of gets credit for it. But he certainly had a lot of good chances where he was deserving of getting a goal in this one. So it was a very impressive game from Nico Sturm. And I thought even Nick Bonino as the third player on this line also played rather well. A step behind his two line mates, I would say. But still, a good complementary piece on this third line. Which usually, in the past, has been the Sharks' worst line. Even though the other three lines have been rolling in some of those games. So it is interesting to see the opposite. But in the end, even if your third line is rolling, if your top six isn't, you're going to have some issues. So then let's bring it to the fourth line. So when I was talking about uh, after the Dallas Stars game, I mentioned how it was very unlikely that Noah Gregor would draw out of the lineup. And if LeBanc would to come back in, he would probably have to sub in over one of Gadjevich or Lindblom. And I was kind of expecting that to happen though I was not going to be surprised if it didn't and of course here we are having it not had happen so it's very strange at this point to see Kevin LeBanc once again a healthy scratch because again he really hasn't been bad this season like at all it's not even like he's been disappointing even either he's actually been rather solid in that first line role and I understand you don't want to play Kevin LeBanc on the fourth line because he doesn't play a fourth line style of game like a no like a Jonah Gadjevich does but eventually it comes down to it the fact that Kevin LeBanc is just a better player than either Lindblom or Gadjevich, likely better than both of them even put together at this point. And so the justification for keeping him out of the lineup and rolling out this fourth line, which admittedly is not bad, it just... The, the, the justification, I feel, as though is relatively flimsy. Now, on to how this fourth line actually played in this game. They also had a couple of very strong shifts in that first period, and I don't think they had as much of a fall-off as the top six for the San Jose Sharks as we moved into the second and third periods, but they also didn't necessarily generate a ton for them. It was an okay line, for, uh, okay game for the first line or for the fourth line. But I imagine now, with the way that this loss went, the disappointing fashion that it was dished out, Kevin LeBanc will indeed draw in. But it'll again be the question of who he replaces. On the defensive side of things, there were certainly issues for the San Jose Sharks. Many of the goals that they gave up were just generally terrible and irresponsible giveaways in the defensive zone. We talked about the Barabanov one on the fourth goal, but one defenseman who I also thought was just a horrible here tonight that would have to be Matt Benning a terrible night for Matt Benning multiple times he's just beat on the rush he's beat in the zone he's getting out muscled he's losing the puck he's giving it up it was just an awful awful game for Matt Benning was reminiscent of some of the very very early games he played this season with the San Jose Sharks so that was a bit disappointing to see another player who I thought looked kind of bad here tonight was probably Mario Ferraro generally Ferraro has just had a very very bad season compared to what we might have expected coming into this year and so that's certainly been disappointing but it was just really a a lazy night from the San Jose Sharks defense as a whole even Eric Carlson who usually shines with offensive chances even if the defensive game isn't necessarily up to par wasn't necessarily that much of a difference maker here tonight besides that first period where even then he wasn't necessarily that great and then when it comes to the goaltending here for Cabo Kakinen, it was pretty much a a very usual, very basic game for Kakinen. Was he terrible in this one? Was he the reason the Sharks lost? Would they have managed to win if he had played just slightly better? Probably not 
in the end, obviously. But did he really give that much of a chance for the San Jose Sharks to win in this one? Not really. He didn't do them many favors. He lets in four goals in this one. The fifth one was, of course, on the empty net. A couple of these he certainly didn't have much of a chance on for instance or for instance the Goodrow goal and the Jenner one was a bit tough off of a deflection but is this an impossible save on the Nyquist shot definitely not and the difference maker it ended up being that just wasn't really that clutch save so like I said a very basic game for Kakin in this season just pretty below average performance but that will do it for this review the Sharks will be back in action tomorrow with some crazy whiplash as they'll face off against the Boston Bruins for the second and final time this season so they'll go from facing off against the worst team in the league to the best team in the league and if the Sharks were to roll out their second and third period performances of this one into that game tomorrow they will get absolutely destroyed but maybe the reason they took their foot off the gas in those last 40 minutes of this game was to try and like conserve energy and yet still try and sneak out a win Uh, for the game tomorrow against the Boston Bruins, so maybe we will get a slightly better performance. We shall see. Class dismissed.